Yeah, I know, I know. It's only natural for us to use the same Elliot Friedman 31 Thoughts article to talk a little bit more about some Toronto Maple Leafs material. Now, we've already talked at length over and over about this Casper Kapanen trade. We made an initial video talking about the trade itself. We talked about all the other teams that Kyle Dubas apparently offered Kapanen to. We also spoke about all the rumors beforehand, talking about whether or not Kapanen could get traded to teams like Detroit, teams like Edmonton, etc. There was a lot going on with Casperi Kapanen trade rumors, but... He did indeed finally get traded to the Pittsburgh Penguins, we made a video on that, and now we're talking about a little bit of the behind-the-scenes moments. Not on the trade itself, but the behind-the-scenes of the behind-the-scenes of the trade. And by that I mean behind-the-scenes of the entire league, not really in the forefront of the Toronto Maple Leafs and their own endeavors. Let's talk about the Kasperi Kapanen trade. Quick recap, it was a big trade from Toronto and Pittsburgh exchanging picks, exchanging players, exchanging prospects. But the big pieces involved were Kasperi Kapanen going over to Pittsburgh in exchange for a first-round pick, which was 15th overall, and a prospect in Philip Hallander. Now, don't get me wrong, there were still some other things in there, too. David Orofsky was in there, Pontus Aberg, as well as Evan Rodriguez, but... For the most part, the big things in this one are Kapanen, the pick, and the prospect. However, leave it up to Elliot Friedman's most recent 31 Thoughts article to go over what exactly this trade looked like from the perspective of other teams in the league. And no, we're not talking about the teams that Kapanen was offered to. In fact, we're talking about the teams that Kapanen wasn't offered to. Let's take a look at thought number 20. The Pittsburgh-Toronto trade surprised teams because they thought the Leafs' ask for a first-round pick and a prospect of Kapanen was more of a draft-time move than anything. I think some teams would have considered a first for him, but not yet. Pittsburgh GM Jim Rutherford doesn't wait when he knows what he wants, so he pounced. With tighter budgets and a tighter cap, both teams showed they didn't want to risk being dateless at the prom. Actually, that's kind of a funny way to put it. Find your partners before there is no flexibility. The draft might not be until October, and the playoffs are still going on. Normally, that's nap time. But this deal sent a message. It's time to do business. So even though there are still the playoffs going on, the Penguins and the Leafs both thought that this was time to do their thing, time to get a head start as to what it was they wanted to do, and for the most part, they both did that. Pittsburgh acquired a player who they can put in their top six, Toronto acquired a draft pick, and they freed up some salary. However, it's the next point over here in 31 Thoughts that really makes things interesting. Here are the parties that were most annoyed by the trade. The team's still playing, not really able to bid on A. Kapanen, or B. The Penguins' first round pick. Now, the next thought in this article does indeed go over the Toronto Maple Leafs again. It talks about Nylander, it talks about other stuff, but we're not going to bring it up here because it's not really super relevant to this topic, but I wanted to talk a little bit about that last point. The fact that teams that were still playing we're kind of pissed off that, hey, we didn't get a chance to bid on that draft pick, and B, we didn't get a chance to bid on Kapanen. Now, the Kapanen trade, and I'm talking about the second one here, not the first one, took place on August 25th. I know that's not super long ago, but bear with me here. Back on August 25th, we were still in the middle of the second round of the playoffs, meaning that the teams that weren't available to make a trade for Kapanen or that Pittsburgh first were the second round teams, Vancouver, Vegas, Colorado, Dallas, Philly, New York Islanders, and then Boston and Tampa Bay. This opens up an entirely interesting discussion to me, where you sit back, you take a look at it, and you say, hmm, out of these eight teams, what would they have wanted if they wanted anything at all? If Friedman is hearing that some of these teams are upset that, hey, you guys made a trade with this Kapanen guy without us, we wanted it on that then it really piques my interest to talk about what exactly these teams would want. So let's go over through all the teams that were in the second round and talk about how they could use a Kapanen and or a first round pick, starting with the top matchup in the West. Let's talk about Vancouver Vegas. So for Vancouver, this is a team that in my opinion, they would have been good with getting a first round pick because this team is 
pickless in the first two rounds. It really does pain me to say that. But their first round pick is over in New Jersey because of the JT Miller trade. Their second round pick is over in LA because of the Tyler Madden, Tyler Toffoli trade. So if they wanted to do exactly what Toronto did, where they gave up a roster player making about $3 million a year for a first round pick, then that would be absolutely amazing. Because Vancouver is also in their own kind of cap strapped situation. They need to re-sign a whole bunch of guys, but they don't really have the money to do so. Freeing some of their cap space would be a very valuable move. If the Penguins wanted, hey, there's a guy named Brandon Sutter. I wonder how he would do playing with the Pittsburgh Penguins. I kid, I kid. But for that reason, I don't really think they would be interested in a Kapanen. Sorry, Cappy, I love ya, especially as a Vancouver fan, but I don't think he would have been on the radar. As for the Vegas Golden Knights, well, if they wanted to actually go forward in the playoffs a little bit more, especially if they end up losing, I would see how a Kapanen could be seen as a valuable piece. It's just... I don't really think that the Golden Knights were one of the teams that were really bidding for a captain or a first round pick because they're in win now mode. And since they are in win now mode, this team is supposed to be able to win now, which implies that they don't really need any extra add ons. So I'm personally not really too sure if they would have needed a first or a captain. As for Dallas, well, this is honestly a team that I could see really benefiting from a guy like Kasperi Kapanen. We saw a lot of Dallas's depth scoring doing all the work in the first few games against the Avalanche. But when that depth scoring disappears, you have to rely on your top guys. Jamie Benn's been okay, but Tyler Sagan, Radulov, man, what are you guys doing? These guys are completely invisible out there. And we'll see by the time this video gets uploaded in a few hours whether or not they can actually come up to play. But if they wanted to add some more scoring, Kapanen's a guy there. And on the subject of the pick, I wouldn't be surprised if they probably would have wanted to entertain the idea at least. They don't have too many amazing prospects. I know Thomas Harley's pretty good, Ty Delandria's pretty good. They got some okay guys, but no top bona fide guys, you know? And at 15th overall for the Pittsburgh Penguins pick, there certainly could be some very, very good players. As for the Colorado Avalanche, man, if you want to talk to me about speed, you want to talk to me about scoring up front, you talk to me about Kasperi Kapanen. This is another one of those teams that if you told me they were interested in Kapanen, I wouldn't be surprised. It's a very interesting fit if you talk about the several connections that Kapanen has to people on that team. Rontanen because of the Finnish connection, Kadri because of their former experience as Leafs. There certainly could be a lot of interest in a Kapanen if I was Joe Sakic. Going over into the East, starting off with the Islanders though, I think they probably would have seen value in a first round pick because they don't have their own from this season. That was traded over to Ottawa in the JG Peugeot trade. So I could totally understand if they wanted to be in the market for that draft pick as well, especially if the price would have been just a player who's able to play in the middle six because the Islanders have a very high amount of capable guys on that squad. For Philly, you could argue it either way. Honestly, a Kapanen could make Philly better, but I don't really think they would be like Vegas, a team that would be super desperate in these kind of negotiations. For the first round pick, I don't really think they would have been super high on that either. Sure, they have a lot of pretty interesting prospects and a lot of really good young pieces, but this team is also in win now mode, quote unquote. So I don't really think it would be super necessary to go after and say, okay, our number one need is a first round pick in the mid teens. So let's see if we can get that. And I guess the same philosophy could honestly be applied to Boston and Tampa Bay. These two teams don't really need prospects, they don't really need picks, they're just good. And we know that they're good. And sure, if they wanted an extra forward in Kapanen and a prospect in a 15th overall pick, then I guess they could get that because they're very loaded on assets. But when Elliot Friedman says that teams that were in the playoffs were upset because they couldn't bid on Kapanen and or a first... To me, it's the cup favorites that don't really enter that picture. It's not Tampa, it's not Boston, it's not the Philadelphia Flyers, and it's not the Golden Knights. To me, it's all the other teams who either don't have their first round pick that should have been in a pretty similar range to that Pittsburgh pick, or that probably could have used a little bit more upfront scoring because they didn't build a team that they felt was 100% ready to contend and win. With Boston, Tampa, and Vegas, these guys build teams that they feel like they could win today with. And even though you're not going to win because only one team is going to win, we all know that, when you suit up at the trade deadline and you go all sell mode and you build your team as a number one contender and you win first in your conference or whatever, you're going into the playoffs with an idea that your team is going to win. So I don't think any of those teams would have been the suitors in this discussion, but everybody else probably would have been. But of course, that's just my own personal opinion. Talk to me in the comments if you think about this whole idea, the idea of Kapanen and a first being bidded on by teams that are still playing playoff hockey. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I and peace.
Bye.